As much as we would like to think we wake up in the morning ready to tackle the day, the truth is we do generally need some routine to get ready for the day. A lot of people focus on the mental side of their morning routine, things like journaling or saying positive affirmations or drinking water or fasting with their cups of black coffee. But often we neglect the physical elements of our morning routine. Hey guys, it's Corey from Redefining Strength and today I wanna to share with you three techniques to wake up your body as well. Technique number one is foam rolling. Foam rolling is the first step in my morning routine because it is a key step in that prehab process. It's a great way to relax overactive and tight muscles. It can help you then get more out of the stretches you include after. Not only does it help relax overactive and tight muscles so you can stretch through a full range of motion, but it also inhibits those muscles to disrupt that mind-body connection so that during activation moves, you're less likely to compensate. For example, if you tend to feel your hip flexors during glute activation moves, foam rolling your hip flexors can help you better activate your glutes. Here are two moves I personally love to include in my morning routine. Move number one is the levator scapular foam rolling. Tight neck, shrugged shoulders, this release can be super helpful. And often when this muscle is tight, we blame our upper traps. So if you wanna help keep your neck and shoulders healthy, improve your scapular mobility, and do something to reverse the fact that you tend to shrug, this is a great move to include. Basically find that upper middle edge of your shoulder blade and place the ball there. You can do this against a wall or by lying on the ground and bridging up back into the ball. You can lean your head away and look towards your opposite armpit as you hold. Breathe and hold and relax. You don't wanna tense against the ball. Move number two is the TFL or tensor fascia lata foam rolling. If you struggle with hip pain, knee pain, or IT band issues, this is a key move to include in your morning routine. By relaxing this commonly overactive hip flexor muscle, you can help yourself then better activate your glute medius. To roll out this area, a ball works best. Place the ball just the backside of that hip bone and work slightly down even as you hold. You wanna lie over the ball and really relax and breathe. You'll feel like you're almost pushing the ball sort of into your hip joint as you hold. You can lift and lower your leg to apply a little bit more pressure and then even relax to help the muscle relax and release. Technique number two is stretching. After foam rolling to relax overactive muscles, I then stretch to both improve my joint mobility, but also my muscle flexibility. I like to use this time to address commonly restricted areas, usually focusing on reversing that hunched posture I get from working on my laptop far too much. There are two amazing compound stretches I like to include. Stretch number one is the chest stretch with scorpion. This is a great move to stretch out your pecs as you work on spinal mobility and even improving your hip mobility. Make sure that as you rotate with the stretch, you engage your upper back to actually stretch out your chest. Also make sure that as you rotate, you engage your glute to help drive your hip into extension as you bring your foot back behind you. By engaging your back and glute to drive the stretch, not only are you improving your mobility and flexibility, but you're also starting to engage and activate those underactive muscles. Do not try and rotate further than you're able and apply more torque to your lumbar spine or lower back. Pause then come back center and switch sides. You don't wanna move quickly, but pause for a breath and relax into the stretch on each side. Stretch number two is the Spider-Man lunge with rotation. This is a great stretch to warm everything up and improve your hip and spinal mobility, as well as activate your abs, glutes, and back. You can improve your shoulder stability as well. Start in that plank position and engage your abs. Step outside your hand with your foot. If you need to adjust, you can put your back knee down. Make sure to squeeze the glute of that back leg as you drive that hip into extension. Engage your upper back to support your shoulders. You don't wanna shrug. You may even think about drawing your shoulder blades down slightly as if moving them towards your back pockets. Then raise the hand on the same side as the foot you step forward and rotate open towards that front leg. Engage your upper back as you rotate. Place the hand back down and step your foot back into the plank position. Step forward on the other side. Really squeeze the glute of the back leg to make sure you're driving your hip into extension and not arching your lower back. Technique number three is activation. After mobilizing everything, you then wanna focus on activation. You wanna establish that mind-body connection and begin to strengthen through a bigger range of motion. It's why stretching prior is so key. It allows you to build a bigger range of motion and then activate through that full range of motion. Here are two activation moves I love to include as they address two areas that are all too often underactive, our back and our glutes. Move number one is the single arm scapular push-up. This is a great unilateral move to help you correct imbalances and improve your scapular stability. 
If you want to improve your posture and even work to improve your rows and pull-ups, this is a great move to make sure you're initiating the pull with your back instead of just your arms. To do the scapular push-up, place your hand on the wall and think about dropping your chest towards the wall, then pushing the wall away. You don't want to rotate open or sag your hips towards the wall. Don't try and create a bigger range of motion than you actually have by bending your elbow. The point of this move is simply to use your back to pinch your shoulder blades towards your spine. It's all about that scapular control to prevent neck and shoulder aches and pains. Move number two is the glute bridge with squeeze. I love this version of the glute bridge as it can be an amazing way to improve your hip and knee stability. This move will not only work your glutes, but also your inner thighs. If you have trouble engaging your abs to protect your lower back during glute bridges, this is a great variation to use. You want to set up so your ankles, knees, and hips are all in line and you're squeezing something between your knees. As you bridge up, make sure to have that posterior pelvic tilt to protect your lower back. Really engage your inner thighs to squeeze something between your knees as you lift and feel your glutes engage to drive your hips into extension. Then lower back down. Keep tension on the thing you're squeezing the entire time. Using these three techniques, you can prep your body for an amazing day and avoid so many different aches and pains. If you liked the video, make sure to like it, comment below if you have any questions, and subscribe. We're posting new videos each week. Thank you.